Well, my seedlings are doing fantastic and it is time to get these things repotted into some bigger pots, get them fed. So I need to go make some potting soil. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Redneck video. Again, my name's Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. And today I'm going to be repotting some seedlings along with a couple of other tasks today. You can see my wife back here in the background. She is planting strawberries out right now because it is finally spring. But um, I got to get some potting mix made. Now, honestly, if you're just planting out a few, um, you know, plant seedlings, you know, tomato plants and things for your garden, it's probably cheaper just to buy potting mix than it is to make it. Uh, but I need quite a bit of it. So I'm going to go ahead and make it. It's a little bit more cost effective this way. Um, it's pretty easy to make. Let me adjust the camera a little bit here. We'll show you what I got going on. All right, first thing I got is a couple of buckets of compost. Uh, two five-gallon buckets of compost in the wheelbarrow. There's a little bit of rabbit manure mixed in with that. Not going to hurt anything. That's going to be good for the plants. Um, and it's pretty much just an equal mix of potting mix, or excuse me, of compost and peat moss. Now, I buy peat moss in a big bag. Big brick like this costs me about $12, $13, somewhere right around in there. And um, it's, it's a lot of, of uh, peat moss. I'm, I've got two five-gallon buckets out of there. I've, I've used it for, I used it last year. I mean, it's quite a bit. It'll last a very long time. Couldn't tell you exactly how many batches of uh, potting soil I can make with that, but it's quite a bit. So anyway, these two buckets of uh, peat moss, and this is just to aerate the soil to keep it light and fluffy. I don't want to pack, um, I don't want to plant straight into uh, compost because it will be, um, it'll be too, um, too dense, too hardly packed uh, to uh, plant into. So uh, those go in. Then um, for water retention, I'm gonna make a well here in the middle to add my other stuff so it doesn't blow away in the wind. For water retention, we're gonna add some uh, perlite. Perlite, vermiculite, whatever you wanna call it. This is uh, just helps with water retention. Again, this stuff is incredibly light, so if it's windy out, you probably don't wanna do this. I'm gonna cover it up a little bit so it doesn't blow away before I get it mixed in. But uh, again, I buy this stuff in bulk too and a great big bag of it lasts me quite a while. As far as how much I'm adding in here, probably about a quarter of the amount of compost and uh, peat moss. So it's half of a five gallon bucket. So somewhere right around in there. Um, I just look at it, just kind of eyeball it and see if it looks right whenever I'm done mixing it all together. And then uh, the only other thing I need to add in here is some garden lime. This pH, um, this peat moss can raise the pH level of your potting mix a little bit, so I want to level that out a little bit. I'm going to add some garden lime here, and I've just got a uh, container of it. I mean, it doesn't, not an exact measurement. That should be plenty to help out with that. So I need to get this all mixed together before the wind picks up and it blows away. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and shovel this into some five gallon buckets to uh, store some of it up because I won't use all of it today. And uh, looks like we got some rain coming in so that'll keep it protected from the rain. So let me get that done real quick. Okay. All right. Now I've got some uh, repotting to do, so I'll probably just go ahead and use what's in the wheelbarrow, store the rest of it up when it's done. One thing I will say about this is you do need to make sure that you, uh, you know, wet this down before you use it. It's, it's pretty light, pretty dry, um, especially with that peat moss in there. It takes a little bit to rehydrate. So if you just put this in your pots and then you go to water, all that's going to want to float right out of your pots. So you probably need to wet it down first, uh, get it rehydrated, then go ahead and uh, repot your plants into it or use it as potting soil at that point. All right, so it's a nice day. I get to sit out on the porch and do this so I can make all kinds of mess and not have to worry about it too much, cleaning up pretty easily. All right, let's talk about um, when it comes to repotting your plants, when do you do that? And uh, you may notice these kind of, well, I don't know, maybe hard to tell on camera if you're not used to seeing seedlings, but again, when they first came up, they all looked exactly the same. Nothing looked any different. Now they've got their true leaves on, so it's a good time to go ahead and repot them. So, uh, you know, I'm going to use a variety of pots. I'm going to use these bigger ones for my tomatoes because they get bigger. And then I'll, um, I don't know how many I have here and how many it's going to take. So as I start working around, I'm going to start with my bigger tomatoes, my mortgage lifter reds. Those are going to be my biggest. And uh, those are a beefsteak tomato, an heirloom beefsteak tomato. So I'm going to start with that. I've got a couple of these peat pots. 
I like these, they work great, um, but I've also got some plastic ones and even some plastic cups here. So it depends on how much um, I have to pot and how much um, I use, be, um, depending on which pots I'm gonna use. Now, one thing I will say about these, you know, they advertise these as being biodegradable, so you just plant the whole pot. That does not work for me. I've, I've never found it to be good. So tear it off before you plant the uh, plant. Um, I've dug them up at the end of the year and found the pot still intact and the plant all root bound in there. So, all right, so I'm gonna start off just by getting some, uh, some dirt in my pot. Pack it down a little bit so it doesn't compact later. And make a little bit of a hole here. I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple of pots going. Max, you found a bone, buddy? You might be able to hear him crunching right off screen here. And I've pre-wet, uh, pre-moistened this potting mix, so it's pretty, uh, pretty good and damp. All right. Nothing special about the way I do this. I'm just gonna kind of pop the, uh, work my way around the bottom of this and pop it out, pop the whole plug out. Hopefully it comes out all at once. Uh, it's not wanting to come out. There we go. And you can see all the roots now. There are three, no, yeah, three plants in this uh, little pot here. All three seeds that I put in there germinated. Um, you can split them apart if you want to. You can just pinch off the uh, the weaker of the the well, the two weaker ones, and uh, plant the stronger one. And that's that's probably what I'm going to do. I've got plenty of tomato plants started here. I don't need the extra starts, so I'm not going to bother disturbing the roots to. Uh, to get all three of them out of here and get them planted. But if you wanted to, you could just kind of easily, gently work them apart and plant all three of them. They'll probably do just fine. Tomatoes are pretty hardy and uh, they do well. So I'm just gonna pinch them off right there and then go in my potting mix. And then to plant these, now you wanna plant tomatoes fairly deep. So I'm gonna put them down. Just, uh, just leave the top of the uh, plant uncovered, that's it. The rest of it's gonna go underground and it will root out all along the sides there. Let's get a little bit more potting mix. It looks pretty dinky in this little bitty old pot, but it's not gonna take long for it to get up to a size. I need to label this so I don't forget what it is. And there's one down, several to go. All right, so I got pretty much all my uh, beefsteak tomatoes planted out. I do have, still have some paste tomatoes here and a couple of cherry tomatoes. I wanna get some bigger pots. I'm, I'm out of the bigger pots, so I'm probably gonna buy some of the uh, larger peat pots. They're pretty cheap and easy to come by, so I'll probably buy some of those and uh, go ahead and pot the rest of those out in there. I like a bigger pot for my tomatoes because they need such a good root base and they grow so fast. Uh, they get pretty good size pretty quick, so I don't like to plant them in these little solo cups. They would probably do just fine in there, but I still like the bigger pot for them. Um, peppers and other things will go fine in these little solo cups. Peppers aren't quite, these are banana peppers, they're not quite ready. I'm going to let them get a little bit more size to them before I go to repot those. But the basil is very well on its way and it's ready to go. So um, I'm going to plant that out. Now it's very similar to the way I plant tomatoes out, but I'm not going to plant these nearly as deep. I'm just plant them basically at the soil level. Uh, not any deeper than that. So the level that they're at right now, and that's as deep as they'll go. But the same process, I'm gonna pick out the stronger, uh, pinch off the, the weaker ones, and plant the uh, stronger one in here. So let's see if I can figure out which ones these are. All right, one or two. There we go, got it.
and that one is ready to go. One thing I will say about these, if you're gonna use solo cups, make sure you put some holes in the bottom of them, just drill a few holes for drainage. Uh, you don't want them sitting in water. Um, not good for your plants at all. They do need to be able to drain. Not only that, but I'm going to be bottom watering these, not watering them from the top, and you need somewhere for it to suck the water up, of course. All right, let's see if I can get the rest of these done real quick. All right, so here's the problem you run into when you're starting a lot of plants and why one of the reasons I say you don't want to start things like your zucchini and that kind of stuff a little bit early because, you know, these were just uh, two seed trays up on this shelf right here. And now it's uh, one, two, three, four, five seed trays full of uh, pots. And I still have some that need to be potted out. I've just got to get a few more pots for them. So uh, anyway, uh, they'll do just fine. I've got a little bit of pop-out greenhouse out here that I'll be putting them under. I won't have to keep them under these lights all the time. It's just a little too cool and cloudy for it today. So anyway, um, the only left thing left to do is to water these things. What I'm going to do is put some water in the bottom of the trays up about that high. You know, just, well, put that about that high. And uh, see how long it takes them to soak up that water. If they soak it up pretty quick, I'll put a little bit more. If they don't soak it up real quick, that's about right. You figure it out over a couple of days about how long, you know, you want it to be soaked up in about a half an hour or something like that. You figure out in a couple of days how much water that's going to take. It's pretty simple. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, as always, God bless.